Okay, the awesome thumb. You guys would have remembered in the previous video. I actually stuck Epsom salts in this battery to help lower the resistance to the um, acid. So now I've um, just got off a of desulfate after being on since 5 o'clock yesterday. Actually, yeah, just, yeah. Being on since 5 pm yesterday. And yeah, monitoring it. It's about 10 minutes being on there, it already started to bubble up like crazy, so it's pretty effective. So, yeah, but that was all coated in acid, and this battery was pretty dirty. This is a pretty um, cheap and nasty little battery, it's pretty light compared to most automotive batteries. It's only a low cold cracking out rating, obviously, made in China, but yeah, they used to be Power 2000, then they've got some other brand name on them now, but. I'll show you the setup I have here. Yeah, have it set up here under this table. Let's see a block of wood in the um, cat litter tray just to catch any acid. Stop the acid from going on the concrete, but yeah, that block of wood's actually absolutely saturated in the acid. The battery's been, um, yeah, probably because I overfilled it with the Epsom salts and the new electrolyte, so the excess acid just boiled over. This actually did its job. Now I'm going to give it a test of the multimeter and give the terminal posts a good clean. Because those cheap batteries are pretty known for getting really messy and full of acid and eating away the terminals in your car. Also when there's acid on your terminal posts, you get the electrolysis effect. Strip the um, gold zinc coating, whatever it is, off the terminal. That one's a okay, but this one here was in contact with the electrolyte, so they got the electrolysis effect and stripped the coating off it. Okay, the a voltage test. It's holding charge, 13.16 volts. Before it was only 11.2. So yeah, it's holding it steady at 13.16 volts. That's good. Now we'll do an amp test. Five point oh six amps, five point oh seven. So it's not quite as healthy as the um, century battery I did previously, but it's better than what it was. It was only at three point eight amps before, but yeah, it's improved. But if I leave it on longer, it will get better again. I've actually been pretty hard in this poor old battery, so okay. We always try to install it. Now this um, battery previously, I uh, just um. Yeah, I just had it over there and I washed it. Full of all bright sodium bicarbonate because these cheaper batteries do tend to weep a lot. And they're a real nuisance when these terminals start to get all cluttered up and your car don't start properly and the battery can't charge properly, then that's why they die so early or prematurely. So, yeah, it's a lot cleaner now. And bicarb sort of cleaned it. I actually got an old toothbrush and just worked it into all the crevices where the water would, or the soda couldn't get to. Soaked it on there, I turned orange around this area because there was a strong concentration of acid around here. This plate here where the terminal posts um, soldered on. But yeah, it's all clear now, so hopefully this battery's not going to weep anymore. Yeah, and charge it. Always do a desulfation process in an open vent near a window of your shed. Try and have it like a range hood set up or something above the battery because this. It does produce a lot more hydrogen, get, hydrogen gas than um, normal. So, yeah, it's a little safety precaution there. Yeah, the tower will break. I can't find a replacement, so I'm going to have to use a bolt to hold it. I never used to, but I'll do it now. Bolt it back on. Should have enough cranking out to start this little A2 engine, so, see how she goes. Oh, I'm going to hold that down by the looks of it. Just in use it, this thing. Alright, let's give it a crack test before I put the secure bracket back on. This car did get rolled at one stage, so set it in a neighbour's property. 
They were test driving it. Had a bit of too much fun doing snakies and stuff down the road. Of course, when you're doing snakies and hooning in the car like this, it's not very well balanced. So yeah, ended up on its roof and sat in that paddock for a couple of years. So we got it for a block car to carry our tools in the back for pruning vines and stuff. So now we've got the big van. This hardly gets used now, but yeah, this gets used for other things now. That's a better cranking amp, see? That's better. Engine starts beautifully, but I've got to adjust everything to get it to run properly. Put the choke on, let's see how she goes. Might fuck it now. Yeah, the uh, muffler's also rusted out, so I had to put a straight pipe on it. I couldn't fix it, couldn't find any replacements. Nor did I have enough chicken wire to make a muffler. I'm gonna have to do this inside. Yeah. She's running good, uh, she starts good now, so the batch is pretty well fixed. I may give it an extra, um, I may sit it for another eight or nine hours, mate, just to, um, yeah, get, uh, get a little bit more sulfur out of it. Yeah, this engine doesn't idle very good when it's cold, so I get it hot and she runs beautifully. So it's probably a bit of an adjustment issue or something like that. So you've done 34,000 Ks. <laughs> so not an 81 model, handy bear. Probably the third one that sort of thing. But yeah, everything's checked out a lot. Under here the valve clearances are checked out there within spec, so they don't have to be attached. That doesn't have to be touched. I might be just, I think it's just a carby problem. But yeah. I might give this an extra couple of hours, as I said, just to confirm it. And if she holds its voltage, it's good, it's fixed. Okay, the oils are, this batch is in pretty bad shape compared to the um, previous one I did. The, back, the voltage went down slightly, dropped a little bit, and it's starting to raise, but it's only hovering around 12.94 volts. So if I give it another 8 or 9 hours on this, it should retain its voltage better. So yeah, I'm just doing this to give it a check. And it, did, it does it, it is starting to um, hold it and retain its voltage, so that's good. I know the batch is, um, I know if it's for real that it's actually working, so I'm going to give it another couple of hours, as I said. See, it's on, that light comes on. Alright, as you can see, it's a battery voltage or goes up on a charger. With a load in the charger, it puts obviously 14 and a half volts just to force the um the charge battery to get it to hold to get it to hold 12. So that's good. It's actually um I know I've, I've proven this principle to myself now. It's actually is doing the exact thing it's designed to do. So I recommend this thing to anyone. It's actually a good money saver and yeah. even if your um, car battery is starting to go flat you don't, have to, you don't have to actually do it on a charger but if it's in your car still and you go on to work all the time you want to yeah last minute thing rack, get one of these and rack it on your battery it might get you an extra couple of months even up to a year or more out of your battery life so yeah so you can afford your battery but it's been very successful, I'm very happy with it, so yeah. Oh yeah, one thing, to listen carefully, the battery is actually, um, yeah, bubbly again, at an uh, alarming rate compared to um, just the charger itself. Yeah, so it's actually forcing that um, self, or if you see the video to this, if you look this up on YouTube, you fit it you should come up with our um, company's video and yeah, the school I was all about it and yeah. So yeah, find out for yourself. So yeah, thanks for watching.